So a compound statement is two simple statements that are combined with what we call a connective. And we have four connectives that we want to look at. We have what's called a conjunction, which is basically the word and. We have a disjunction, which is going to be the word or. We have what's called a conditional, which is denoted with an if-then. And the fourth one is what's called a biconditional, which is going to have the phrase if and only if. So let me give you just an example or two. So I'm going to do one that has an and in it. So I'm going to say that Josh is going to the movies. Okay, so that is a simple statement. I'm going to put a connective in between. So I'm going to use the word and for this first one. And then I'm going to do a second connective or second simple statement. So I'm going to say Abby is going to the mall. So we now have two simple statements that are combined with a connective. That's the word and. Okay, and or I could do the or the same way. I could say Josh is going to the movies or Abby is going to the mall. Um, for a conditional, I'll just do one more example. I could say, this is an if-then, so I could say, if you study, then you will make a better grade. So again, we have two simple statements, the first being you study, the second being you will make a better grade, and they're connected with the phrasing if and then. Or we could say you study if and only if you make a better grade, and that would be an example of a biconditional. Now, as we move into the next section, we're going to be talking a lot more about these connectives. And so what I want to do right here is simply give you some some notation for the connectives. So if we are talking about the conjunction, we're going to use a symbol that looks like this. All right? And if I'm talking about a disjunction, in other words, the or, I'm going to use a symbol that looks like that. So this potentially is a problem for students because you have to remember which one is which. And so I don't know if there's an easy way that you can think of to remember that the and symbol looks like this. I tend to think that that almost looks like an A, that if I were to cross it, A for and. Okay, so I don't know if something like that might help you. But you do want a way to remember which symbol is for the and and which symbol is for the or. For the conditional, your symbol is going to be an arrow. And that makes sense because you're looking at if, then this conclusion is met. And finally, for your biconditional symbol, you're going to use an arrow that has, a, well, actually a line that has an arrow on both ends. And so you want to go ahead and become familiar with those symbols because like I said, in the next section, we'll be using those to work some problems.